Hey everybody, we want to welcome you to Heart to Heart with Dan and Angela. Yay! And uh, we're so glad to be with you guys today. And we just want to say up front, we want to thank all of you guys. We have, we have so many people that comment on our channel. It's amazing, isn't it? With the most wonderful comments. And we just want to say that we love you. We're here to help you. We're here to maybe steer a little bit, you know, maybe give some guidance, but never to tell you what to do or what to believe or anything like that. You'll never hear us doing that. But we will say, we will point out perspectives on things so that you can look at things from a little bit different angle regarding, you know, this religion or Angela's religion, Worldwide Church of God. And uh, today I wanted to talk about how easy, how easy it is to get caught into a cult. Now, for me, I think at Angela, too, were you born into your cult? Basically, yeah. Pretty much born in. I was born in. So we really didn't have anything to compare things to. You know, we had our own set of scriptures, our own set of beliefs, and we were told these were the truth, and we have them, you know, as any, everybody else says, we have the truth and you don't. And so, <clears throat> but I wanted to talk about today how easy it is to get caught into a cult. Even if you leave the Jehovah's Witnesses, you're vulnerable. You know, you're vulnerable to going into another cult. And there's even books out saying that, you know, because we want that absolute truth again, when we get out of the Jehovah's Witnesses, we want to know where's the truth? Well, who's got the truth? So we rush around going into spiritual communities and churches and different things. And sure enough, they tell you, well, this is the truth. You know, whether it's Seventh-day Adventist, Mormonism, um, Lutheran, Baptist, Catholic, all of them say, you know, this is the place that where you landed is the place where the truth is. But you got to be very careful where you land when you come out of the witnesses, when you wake up. But we watched a movie the other day. I wanted to do this video because me and Angela wanted to tell you about this movie that we watched the other day. It's on Netflix and it's on a series called Haunted. And so if you go on Netflix and you type in Haunted, you'll see this big house. And then within that, there's three seasons, I believe, right? Yeah, yeah, I think it's seasons. It might be four seasons. Yeah. And this one's in number two. And you want season number two. Uh, 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 and there's a there's a movie called Cult of Torture. And, and uh, it's the most amazing movie. And, and it's about the, the cult Angela's in, the Worldwide Church of God. Yeah. And it shows how easily, how easily you can end up in a cult. It's really done well, it's a short movie, so if you got Netflix, I don't think it costs anything if you have that subscription on your app. But uh, it shows how easily, easily we can be sucked into a cult if we don't have information, if we don't have knowledge, if we don't have a little bit of broader knowledge. What they tell you, you know, about the Bible is, is when they say it's in here and this is what we believe, you know, how do you have a choice but to, but to believe it? If you believe this Bible is from God's own hand and you believe it's unequivocally the word of God, you could end up in any cult. So yeah, anyway, can I just say yeah, one go, thing? Ahead. go ahead. Um, so when you go into Haunted, there's a whole bunch of different ones apparently about the Worldwide Church of God. It's like horror stories, but it's not the main, not the main of them had it quite that bad. But this particular episode is the least uh, crazy. It's not bloody, none of that. Um, it's, it's pretty, it's horrible, but it's not bloody, not, none of that. It's not like lots of demons, or none of that. So uh, the other ones are all demons and blood and all that. So that's why we're saying be sure and go to that episode because you probably won't like the other ones. And not that they're not true. I don't know if they are or they're not, but this one is provable, and there's proof all the yeah, way around. Yeah, it's, it's a true yeah. story. And, and I, actually, I've been in communication with the guy. He's a dear man. Yeah, he truly you can is. find him on Facebook. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, but it's a it's a very interesting story because basically it's about a, a small family, two two boys, and a mother and father, and they're living where where are they living in Louisiana, I yes, believe. Louisiana. And they're playing in these big fields, there's beautiful, you know, big tall grass, and they're catching butterflies, and they're only what? What did you say, six, seven years old? Not even that. Not even that. Five years old, and they're catching butterflies and putting them in the jar and letting them go and yeah. letting them land. They're just Enjoying having the most life. beautiful time. They're swinging on their little tire and back. Had a great life. Well, <clears throat> yes, and all of a sudden, the mother hears, and this is the danger of this new facility that Watchtower wants to put in, you know, mm -hmm. this satellite, you know, this big media center because a lot of people are listening, a lot of people are going through different things in their life where they feel they need some answers, you know, they've been divorced, they lost their job, there's fear set in, what's life about, what's my life about, what's the world about, why am I here? 
and religion is always there to tell you, you know, they have all the answers, right? Especially Jehovah's Witnesses. And so for whatever reason, this lady's listening to the radio and Herbert W. Armstrong comes on, you know, no different than a Jehovah's Witness broadcaster. Right. You know, Herbert W. Armstrong comes on and she said, wow, you know, that sounds really good. You know, the world tomorrow is going to be a better place. Tomorrow it's going to be a better yeah, place. Yeah, it's like the paradise and the witnesses. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we just got to wait just a little bit and it'll, it'll be over. So she's all excited. And, and, and that's good news for a lot of people, right, that right. are struggling, that it's right. going to be over soon, right? And so, I mean, we're kind of looking forward to that right now with the way the world is. We're looking forward to this stuff to end, you know? Right. Um, but, but anyway, she hears this broadcast and she says, my God, I'm going to have this, these people come out to the house, this, this, you know, elder from the church. And now it's because they moved. Yes. They moved because the church encouraged them to, I think. So they moved to a new house and he came over to bless the house and all this. Yeah, bless the house and meet the family and everything. Well, they have this doctrine in there about you know the children you know the children must be disciplined we know what that's like being jehovah's witnesses right the children must be disciplined so the guy looks out back and they're the same size little boys you know they just they just moved closer so they could go to the church she just loved it she goes we got to get in town where we could be at church regularly so the man comes in the house and he looks out and hears the boys playing it back and laughing <clears throat> and laughing and having a wonderful time just like kids do and, the, and the, the man says, boy, you know, like this, like, boy, you know, get in here, come here. And the one kid runs in and, and the other kid stays out there because he's in his imagination. He's just, you know, kind of swinging around on the tire. And the guy walked out there and started paddling him really, really hard. Just boom, 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 boom. And this other boy's looking like, you know, like what's happening to our world? What's, what's going on? And uh, the man was like, this is what you do with boys that are disobedient. Yeah, you know what I mean? It was kind of that attitude. Yeah, and of course, they probably were not in the church yet. They were being, <coughs> uh, how did they say that? You know how you guys do, you test them out, you make sure. Yeah. They were in that phase. So yeah. the kids got spanked till you know, the cows came home. Yeah, so this boy got spanked and this kid's like, man, what is he doing to my brother? This is horrible. So anyway, they show them in the church and their whole world's all new now, right? Oh, they man. got the organ playing and the church and there's this Herbert W. Armstrong and, you know, these talks and, you know, they're, they're witnessing all kinds of stuff, you know, really elder abuse. But all of a sudden that elder takes a, a, a longing to, this, to one of the children or takes a look at him and he says, something's wrong with that boy. You know, that boy's a homosexual. That boy's gay. And, uh, so he's got a demon. So he's okay. got a demon, That's what they say. which is what they do to us, right? When we leave, they oh, he got a demon. He went back to Satan's world. That's what they said. And so the boy's like, what's, what's a demon? What's wrong with me? What do they mean I'm gay? So the mother, so the kid's compliant. He doesn't know what's going on. And his mother puts him in a, in a room for months. I think it was like six months of uh, quarantining and lack of food. I, I mean, yeah, she would go like sometimes a day, <coughs> day and have two days with no food, no water. Yeah, and, and, and they were trying to get this spirit out. Well, eventually, what happened? Should, to should we tell them any more about well, it? Well, just tell them a little bit more. Okay. But eventually, they came to the house, and they said, we need to take them to the boys' home. And what yeah, was it called? That's just to go a long way. Yeah, it was called the uh, Bethany? Bethany School for Boys. They had, they had a girls' school, and then they just had opened this boys' school, and oh, my gosh. Yeah, and and then from there, it, got, it just got really brutal with uh, torture like you wouldn't believe. And uh, horrible stuff, but oh, it's it just really, really sad what happened to this boy. He's still alive. He's the one who did the documentary. He's actually talking and he's crying. He's an older guy. He's probably 65, would you say? Yeah, probably maybe 60. Maybe but, 60. You know, and I don't know that this was an absolutely a worldwide facility, but it was what they were using at least, you know. Yes. Yeah, it was horrible. But the, but the church was Worldwide Church of God yeah. where they were talking. But yeah, it was so sad because they really, you know, the kid thought this is what needed to happen to me because somebody else told him something's wrong with him. Isn't that what the witnesses do to us? They tell us something's wrong with us. They're always pointing out what's wrong with us. We're always doing something wrong. We're always gossiping. We're always short on hours. We're always sexually wrong in the bedroom we're masturbating we're doing something wrong yeah and the so talk wrong yeah wasn't a good yeah talk. your talk wasn't good you're this you know so we're always being graded your comment wasn't good enough it wasn't in your own words you, you, you know i mean they just got you on a tight string and so anyway this kid you know was like wow you know what are these shackles and what is all this stuff in here and he found out real quick 
but he really went through some tremendous abuse. He came out of it, <clears throat> they dropped him off at his home and basically threw him out on the driveway and uh, told his dad, he, he didn't listen to any word we told him. He's rebellious. What else did he tell him? Just he's, Yeah, it, it didn't do him any good. It didn't do him any good. He wouldn't work with us. And his dad kicked him out, just like the witnesses do to us when the elders say, your son isn't complying or, or this and that. It, it was brutal. But the point I wanted to make of watching the movie was it just reminds me of, of the trap that we get into, even the scriptural trap. I, I mean, Jehovah's Witnesses use has have taken that scripture that says the fear of Jehovah is the beginning of wisdom, and that's been a license for them to drill fear into us, yeah. to beat us with that. We, we've been beaten with that. Angela went to the assembly with me one time, and we were listening to the assembly, and it was like, screaming and killing and murder and you know play they were having one of those plays yeah they were having a drama oh yeah you know and they went back in old world and jehovah told them don't go into the city because you'll be destroyed so they went into the city and uh of course they showed him killing and then they brought it to modern day never leave jehovah's organization you'll die if you leave you'll get aids if it's you like leave them, you'll, you, know. you know on and on but it, it just amazes me how a lot of these religions use scripture to imprison us. And, and, and I got to say, guys, it isn't only us. If you go into different churches, like say you go into the Seventh-day Adventist, okay, say this is the Bible. This is probably where they spend most of the time, right here. This is what they call the Torah, right? No, the first five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the first five books. It's the Torah. See, it's a... It's, or the Pentateuch. Yeah, the Pentateuch. But basically, it has to do with the law, Holy first Day, Sabbath. Books. And so they're real big if you don't keep the Sabbath. Like we say, if you don't use the name Jehovah, then you don't know Jehovah. So they're like, if you don't keep the Sabbath, then you're not a friend of God. You know what I mean? And then you've got the Jehovah's Witnesses who are kind of... We also we also liked Revelations. Oh, and they also like Revelation. But, but, you know. Another horror story. <laughs> and so and so the Witnesses kind of use it all, but they more hang out in the Old Testament. I mean, it's it's a lot of fear... A lot of anger toward Jehovah, or a lot of anger that Jehovah has towards the people for disobedience, for obeying. So they hang out a little bit here, and they say, well, Jesus died for us here, you know. And then, you know, the Mormons, they're, they're kind of the same way. Everybody has, I'm just going to use this word gematria. Everybody has a gematria or a tapestry of scriptures. When you go into their church, there's a, there's a tapestry. Here's what we believe and why we believe it. And honestly, depending on which church you went into first, you would be apt to believe it, wouldn't you say? Mm -hmm. I mean, if I was in if I was in Seventh Day Adventist or Worldwide, and they they talked about the Old Testament and read it right out of the Bible and said you needed to keep the holy days and the Sabbath, and that was my first uh, you, you know reference to the Bible, I would be in hook, line, and sinker, right? Now, now, if I go into the Seventh Day Adventist from Jehovah's Witnesses, I say, well, you know the 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 the, what was it, the, the law has been fulfilled. And, you know, we don't have to keep it like that. You know, we don't have to keep the, the Sabbath or the, or the whatever. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so, and so depending on where, where I'm at and where my indoctrination is, is where I will edge the other one out. So as a Jehovah's Witnesses witness, I would never fit into any other church. But Jehovah's Witnesses, because of the tapestry the, the, the different scriptures that they pull from here and here and here and here and all these different places. Likewise, in other churches, it's the same way, right? When you go into these churches, they have a tapestry and it's very believable, I gotta tell you. But they all have something very similar. If you leave, yeah, you're you're throwing away. Do you want to say something? Yeah, only just this is just bothering me, guys. Yeah. But um, Dan is a little bit confused about the worldwide because my mother got out, and I then I met Dan, and she was kind of more Masonic at that point. So we got kicked out of the worldwide, and then my mom went down a Masonic road. So in that, they they kind of do focus on the first five books of the Bible. However, in worldwide, we were basically like the Jehovah's Witnesses. We studied the whole entire Bible. Um, but my mom focused on that those first five later on when I met Dan. So, you know, it, again, it's a tapestry. It's just yeah. another tapestry. <clears> but, they, but they are identical. I mean, Angela was listening to some podcasts the other day, and they were talking about Herbert W. Armstrong, and he had advertising ability. You know, he had access to printing presses. Oh, he no, knew, he, he, was, he owned them. He owned them. Second Jehovah's largest in Witnesses. The world. And, here, and here's what they said years ago. Whoever owns the press 
can control the people. That's, that's right. And, and it's true. And, and that's why, you, you know, the people with the press run the world, just like mm -hmm. the media today right. and their propaganda run the world through the, the news stations. Yeah. They, they, they just promote what it is they want to promote. Right. So, so anyway, Powerful. that's what I wanted to say. But it just amazes me. You know, I, it, it's so sad, you, you know, that I got trapped for, what, 40 years? How long were you trapped? Imprisoned, well, I want to say you were 22 in prison. years that I got free for a while, and then I got into another cult, unfortunately. So that was another 16 and a half years. So how many is that? Uh, 20, 36, nearly 40 for me, too. Yeah. yeah. So how would you say you got free from all that indoctrination? After it was all the two different cults? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, how did you... How did you step out of all those belief systems? Like we had Jehovah, we had the Trinity, we don't believe in the Trinity, we don't take blood, we don't salute the flag, you know, we're different. But how did you get out of all that? Well, you know, it's interesting, but God actually arranged it. I, I'm telling you, it's what he did. He got me up into the mountains where then my husband and I loved the mountains, but then we had only one car. My husband had to go to work in the one car and I was stuck home with the kids. And so, um, but I'd already been kicked out of Worldwide, so I was kind of in between cults at that, at that point. And then basically, you know, God helped me out with getting out of that one by directly intervening, by literally showing and telling me, um, do you see how this is wrong? Do you see how that's wrong? And so I managed to get free at a big time and uh, found so what like I- So like the Holy Spirit helped you. Yeah, the Holy Spirit absolutely did. It directly, in, direct intervention straight from the Holy Spirit and from God. And so then, I, but unfortunately, then my husband became jealous of this, I don't know, the, the, the joy, the, the love for God, the love for life, the love for, and he just wanted that place in my heart. So it ended up going down a very south road and eventually, I can't even believe how it happened, but he ended up a cult leader and that was a nasty deal, really nasty deal. And um, so 16 and a half years later, I got out of it um, because I cried out to God. I couldn't take it anymore. And I just said, God help me. Uh, you know, I'm not going to make it if you don't help me. I was very much alone. And so again, because I cried out to God for help, he, he directly in, in, intervened. I did and, the same. And so I met people quickly and swiftly. And within, um, you know, a week time, I'm realizing I'm in a cult. And then within another a couple weeks time or so, I met Dan. And then, um, and then after that, I began to get better. I, I started 12 step groups and all of that and began my trek of getting better and getting out of there. And God just, just gently and lovingly showed me the right books to read, just landed them in my, in my lap and um, pointed out the different people, 12 steps. People. I tried different kinds of 12 steps out and, and some were healthy, some were not. Met yeah, great people. Dan was my, my mentor because he'd been mentored and he used his mentoring on me and we helped each other heal really. We were both very damaged when yep. we met, but God was there. Yep. And in spite of what we were told that God was mad Outside at us. Outside of religion, God mm -hmm. was there. Yeah, and, and, and I, I was surprised <coughs> by that because I thought like they taught us that God was mad at me and that he hated me and that I'm, you know, you know, Satan's child, really, you know, basically speaking. And, um, but that, then all of a sudden I, I saw that he was there for me. I couldn't even believe it. I'm like, no way. I thought you hated me, but he was right there and in every which way. And say for Dan too, just for yep. the crying out, just for the guts to yep. say, help me, yep. God. And you know, and, and <clears throat> the thing that God does is helps us organize, you, you know, like these scriptures. Like I, I just have to say, from, from being on a, a lot of radio shows and stuff, I think a lot of people are physically out, but not mentally out. Oh yeah. I think they're physically out of there for whatever reason, either they got kicked out or they just, you know, told the elders where to go. But the fact that they believe that what the Bible says is true, you, you know, about God's name, about this, about that, about this, until you reorganize that. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? Yeah. And that's what God had to help me do when I was in that first cult. Because in the first cult, I was Jehovah's Witness with Jewish twist, okay? So Jewish twist meant the Sabbath day. So like you guys are focused on the name Jehovah and you had these certain things, the blood, all that. We had our certain ones and our certain ones were the Sabbath day and um, the holy days and they must be kept holy, the clean and unclean foods. And that's what we focused on to be holy. Whereas you guys had different ones. It was like Dan said, a tapestry. It's both the same, just different. I mean, you know what I'm saying? And so uh, to get out of that requires God help. It, it really does because, but he will guide each one of us individually <coughs> 
yes. as what we each need because yes. like like we saw in the, some of these movies about these episodes of these uh, world widers being abused well some were abused in this it, it, where they they were so afraid of demons and their parents were afraid of demons and everybody's all involved in demons and everybody demonizes everybody else and everyone becomes so afraid of everybody else and then they, they don't trust anybody else and they tattletale and all these horrible things and the next thing you know they're becoming murderous because they're so afraid fear 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 of demons 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 and whereas oh, yeah. my my home wasn't quite exactly like that growing up so do you see how my tapestry being a little bit different because each church is different around the country um uh, you know what i'm saying i mean you could go to one kingdom hall and it feels good you can go to one worldwide church god it's good and another one is really really bad really controlling really really abusive so you know they depend across the board so we all need a little different help yeah that's how i see it it's individualized yeah. and if you're and if you're caught up in the beliefs of a religion like i was with jehovah's witnesses right we had the blood you know abstain from food sacrifice to idols and from blood but a lady came over one day with a stack of Bibles and says, you know, let's read what it says. And one thing it said was it didn't say good health to you. It said farewell. Mm -hmm. But another Bible says abstain from the blood of strangled animals. It doesn't say abstain from blood that's been taken from a hospital to save your life if you need a pint of blood or something like that. It says abstain from the, the, the from drinking the blood or eating the blood in strangled animals. Mm -hmm. Like like if an animal is strangled, right? It wasn't bled properly. We eat meat all the time, right? Some of us do. But they, they bleed them right away. So so it was, you know, stop eating the animals that haven't been drained properly of the blood. Yeah. But see yeah. the witness scripture twisted that. So 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 that can take that scripture and do this, right? The scripture about Jehovah's name, the same thing. Does God need you to call him Jehovah? Does he need you to call him by the first name? And I remember, and I've said this before, but I know the witnesses say Jehovah only hears. He can only hear his name. He only hears it if you say Jehovah. But the truth of it is, if I say, God, I need some help, do you think he cares, really? Do you think that knowing the name Jehovah has helped the witnesses? I mean, they've been false prophesying for over 100 years, 100 years of false prophesying. And, and Jehovah's given them bits and pieces, but, but now all the information, all the food at the proper time is all being uh, pulled back and recycled and the papers being recycled and the words are being reshuffled and re... I, I, I think of the witnesses like one of those uh, lottery machines, you know, that the thing's rolling and all those things and it spits out a date. That's what the witnesses have been doing for over a hundred years. And they just keep taking the Bible, Revelation and Isaiah and you know Ezekiel and, and they keep going like this and it's almost like throwing it down and saying we have a new uh, we have a new idea when the end's going to come yeah you know and it's ridiculous but we just wanted to tell you on this video be careful where you go once you leave and the other thing that we wanted to tell you is make sure when you're out that you're out go through some of those scriptures go back through them and, 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 and look at them again, you, you know what I mean? Yeah. Take, take a look at them afresh because you have to. Because if, if you're bound by scripture, if you're imprisoned by scripture in your mind, you really can't go forward, you really can't. Even though you're out, you'll always be wondering. Like I used to try to, I didn't mean to, but I was always like defending the name of Jehovah, not intentionally. Yeah, but when for I, years I've tried yeah, to Yeah, when I talk to people, I say, oh, it's, uh, you know, 7,000 times in the Old Testament, YHWH. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hell, I'd sell people on it. And I Ugh. thought, and I wasn't free. No. I wasn't free. No. But then I realized, you know, anybody can pray to God. God's not partial. Anybody can say, God help me, and God hears them. We're all children of God. We are not separated. What is breathing? What is pumping my heart, right? How did I get here? Where did I come from? Really, where did I come from? Where do I go when, when I'm gone? I'm only here for this little bitty bit of time, but who birthed me here? Who knows every hair in my head? God. So how can we be separate? We can't really be separate. So we're obviously here to learn something, to grow. And, uh, and, to, and can I say this yeah, too? Yeah, go ahead. It says that, now just think about this for a minute. Now I was Worldwide Church of God. Now you guys would have thought, you know, I'm not in the right truth, you know, and Dan's in, and he was in the right truth. But here's the thing, God helped me in a special way just for me. He spent people in my life, books in my life. He intervened personally by speaking to me, you guys. I, it's a crazy and incredible story because otherwise I was never getting out of there. And then Dan also too got out of there and he was immediately helped by a woman that she, and she said, you know, to her, hey ma'am, you know, um, I need help. And she goes, oh, 
I was just praying to the Lord, asking him to show me, you know, who, who I could help because she was, I don't know, she was doing well in life and she had money and she, she, Came my mentor. she, she ended up being an ex Jehovah's witness, but Dan didn't know that at the time. But she said, um, and I was just praying that I could help someone come right in. And then for the next three years, she mentored Dan. Um, and she was brilliant. She was actually brilliant. Really helped him break things down. Nobody else could have done that. Got me free. Yeah. Got my mind free. That's the main thing to get oh, free is your mind. Yes. Because if your mind is trapped and caught and imprisoned by by scripture, then then it's it's a horrible place. Yeah, you yeah. can be in shame and guilt and fear. And the other thing I, I want right, and the lady was again ex Jehovah's Witness, but she was blessed. She was very, very blessed, organized, sharp, knew that Bible, knew how to take it apart. I mean, God had just blessed her. So guess what? God blessed her, blessed Dan, blessed me, and I wasn't even a Jehovah's Witness. And likewise, you guys who are worldwiders, he blessed Dan. And yep. God loves us all, guys. It doesn't really that's matter. Right. I'm telling you, he it, loves us all. That's right. And I, and I want to say, too, if, if you go into some other facility church you know indoctrination tank wherever you go if somebody tells you don't trust your heart don't trust your oh. trust your intuition don't trust your own thinking don't read any other books don't read any other magazines only listen to what we're listening to you run like hell right and that's why they say if you see the buddha kill it you know Amen if you see the buddha run right run the other way if you see the guy that's sitting there and he has all your answers run the other way and, and the other thing is check out that wording right there where it says uh, the heart is in the jehovah's witness bible the heart is treacherous and desperate and who can know it guys wrongly translated. wrongly translated and not only that but so did the other king james not near as bad not even but that's also wrongly translated yes, it is. and uh, you can clearly find that if you just go back to the original words and you can see Doesn't that what say the, that no it, it basically says this the heart is deep who there it's very deep the heart is very yes. deep who can know it yes that is there what it, it is. says um and, and it's got some other wonderful words to describe that but that is what it means right. right there and so it, it describes you can see it on the internet how it was the church just slowly you know made it where it's at now where it's not healthy and you guys this bible is way even worse than that by saying treacherous they really twisted it oh, it's yeah. not what it says at all our heart's not treacherous it's got god in there and, and the mind is what's treacherous. That's right. And those, and, and, we're, and our mind isn't supposed to be shut down and collapsed in by one man's belief system who no. runs the top of an organization. And so that's the problem. So yeah, trust your heart. It, it was trust interesting. Your intuition. When, I, when I listened to this worldwide church of God, it was the same thing. Get rid of your magazines. Get rid of your books. You know, here's the movies we want you to watch, mm -hmm. and here's the ones we don't want you to watch. It was, it's identical. Yeah. They put out pamphlets and brochures and bus stations. Actually, mainly and, magazines. And at, magazines. At yeah. Grocery stores, gas stations. Just uh, like we did. Grocery stores everywhere. Yeah. It's identical. Airports, bus stations. And, you know, they kept the people working, kept the people passing out their literature, promote, promote, promote. Work for us. That's yeah, what you do in sales. They say promote, promote, promote. So everywhere you go, you're promoting. You're telling. We couldn't even take a vacation without having a handful no, of pamphlets we, in our pockets. We didn't pockets. have enough money to. We didn't even have money not to go to the dentist. You know what I mean? And so we'd, we'd have to wait till our teeth were rotten before we'd finally go to the dentist. And, you know, it was just terrible because they paid my dad so ridiculous low wages with six children. It was just really pathetic because they were so greedy. Yeah, just using them. Yeah. And so just remember that all of, all of these faculties that God put in us, the heart, that we love with. We love other people. We can love a stranger. God gave us that heart. God gave us this mind to think with. God gave us intuition, men and women. Yes. Gave us intuition to to know things, even at a distance, if someone's dangerous or, or whatever. Yes, we should we, trust We it. have these faculties, and we should never let men shut them down, and never let men, if you ever go into a church or spiritual facility where there's Fear, where they're promoting fear, you or run. lots of demons. Oh, man. run out of there too. Whew. Run out of there too. Demons. Are they special? Yeah, be done Anything with it. like that? So anyway, guys, we just wanted to share this with you. I, we, like I said, we watched that movie Cult of Torture, and uh, it's on Netflix. And you go to the Haunted, right? Haunted. Right. Haunted is first, and, and then yep. Look for the Cult of Torture. Netflix Haunted. A second and then episode. Second episode, um, Cult of Torture. Yeah. And you'll see. And it's about a guy named James Swift. Yeah. So that's how you'll know. And he's got James Facebook? Swift. Uh, it, you can go on, on Messenger and write to James Swift, and he will answer you. And you'll see his story. He's a beautiful man, sensitive man. Oh, yeah. 
I mean, your heart will break when you watch this movie. Yeah, he's got a Facebook account. But man, you'll be forever warned. Be oh, careful. Man. Be careful when you lead. It doesn't stop there. Me and Angela have been in many churches. And I got to tell you, we've been in a couple. They're pretty large Christian churches where they said, do not, you know, that, that, I mean, that guy had the finger out. Anybody says the word spirit, get out of there. Anybody says the word metaphysical or anything other than Jesus, get out. Yeah, that woman uh, just, you know, st talks up like she's uh, authority or something like that. They're going to call you a Jezebel spirit. I, I actually went into a church, which I tell them about the seventh day. Okay. I went in the seventh day and I was, and I was, uh, we, we were visiting and they were having like a dinner or, or something after church. They always put on like a vegan dinner. And anyway, when I was in there, the, the sisters came up to me and they told me that Angela was possessed by a spirit. Jezebel. Uh, uh, Jezebel. Yeah, That's like an said. independent spirit because- I think they said it was a Jezebel spirit. It was, yeah. but you, it was because she had her own mind. Angela said, no, 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 I don't believe this. And, and they were like, you know, they kind of grabbed my arm and like, well, we're praying for your wife. And I was like, well, she really don't need praying for. And they like, well, you know, she, but, but that's what they do. They, they say you've got a spirit. And that's what we do, what we used to do when people left. They have a spirit. They went back to Satan. And we totally destroy their character, you know? Right. So, so anyway, go and, ahead. And also intuition. I want to say one thing about intuition. That was one of the first things Dan did to help me. This is how I got better really fast, too. Is that he said, um, I'd say, Dan, da 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 this happened and that happened. And and, and, and then um, I'd say, do you think I saw that right? Oh, yeah. You, you saw that right. Her. Absolutely, well, you saw that right. And and then my mom would say, you know, no. You know, you she, she twisted right. it. She didn't see it. She never sees it right. She twists things like always. She's always said that about me. And, and I'm like, really, Dan, you think I, I called that right with my mom? You, that's how you saw it, too? Oh, yeah, absolutely. You called it right. I'm like, oh, my gosh. And then I started I calling it right with her mom. <laughs> I have intuition. I knew it. I'd always had that gift. But my mother would always say that what I was seeing or saying was wrong and opposite of that. And it just messed with me really bad. And so that was really healing for me to be validated because I really truly believe we all have inner all inner do. knowing, inner intuition from God. And it's, it's what keeps us safe, like Dan said. And if people try to tell you that you're seeing it wrong or you're just rebellious or you have a demon or you have a spirit or something, you're not going to trust you. And you're just going to say, okay, yeah, okay, all right. And you're just going to obey. I must be obedient. I must be obedient. I must obey Jehovah or I must, be, you know, whatever. And you, you won't ever get well. And, and so that's abusive, by the way, guys. That's abusive. You'll find out. This that's is right. very abusive religion and you don't want to be in it. Run. And so we're happy, and you can see that we're not we're not bogged down, and we, nope. we we're in, we're inspiring. You know, we feel inspired is what I mean to say, and and we we know that God is with us, and you'll feel the same way too once you get free from all this weight. It's yep. weight. Just get out, let the water clear, push the Bible away for a while. If you want to read your Bible, read your Bible, read it on your own, read yeah. where you want in the Bible, read the middle read of the Bible, or don't read matter. it. You read know? something different. Yeah, read something different. Yeah, take, that's what Dan had to do for a, a lot, a yeah, lot, a lot of years. 20 some years. 20 yeah. some years. And even now, he doesn't <clears throat> read it regularly. No. Because, you know, there, there's, well, anyway, I won't get into that. But anyway, he, he reads lots of other things besides. That's right. So, But I read what I want. I do what I want. I, I use my own mind, and nobody tells me what to think right. or what to do. or, And that's the way it should be. Yep. And me too. Yep. So anyway, guys, we just wanted to do this short video uh, for you. Three, and, three minutes, uh, not too bad. Yep. Better than most. And, <laughs> again, we're not telling you what to do. We're just telling you beware. Um, we've been out for 23 years now, I think. 22, yeah. 23 uh, years. For, for Dan, for me, it's only been uh, 19. 19. So, you know, we've been out a little while. We've been to a lot of places. We, we wanted to find that quick truth again. And yeah, you know, and, and never really did. There's no, no really one place to find any whole truth you know god is pretty big yeah. so anyway i should tell you something guys that dan wrote a book i, I helped him it's called eyewitness the shocking insider story of jehovah's witness witnesses and you can also get it uh on an, an ebook form it's only a dollar 99 um so hey that's that's really good and i i think you really love it because it's dan's story of what he went through growing up and, how the witnesses, I got out, and, and then how he got how god led him out of there and that woman that helped him and then meeting me all and, kinds of miracles in here uh, that happened to me after i got book. out it's a tough story though my dad read it three times he got so much out of it my oh, dad's yeah. a jehovah's we witness just him a i mean whole i'm bunch wrong of them, <laughs> sorry you know? and then um this book I wrote, this this one I just put out in January this year, 
and awakening from unconscious resentment, learning to uncover the hidden saboteurs that are hindering your life and hindering your relationships. So I think that it, it's my story too, and uh, worldwide growing up in there, and then what happened in the second cult, and how that took me down, and, and then how God helped me, and how I went into deep resentment it was killing me, uh, my physical body even, and I, I, I was a mess. And then how God brought me out, meeting Dan. So we kind of had the same ending, how meeting each other was the end of our book and how God began to turn our life around. Same in Dan's book here, same exact thing. And so, um, and then there's one more I should tell you about too, just in case. The secret brainwashing techniques of Jehovah's Witnesses, five steps to escaping the web of JW indoctrination. And so that's an ebook only on Amazon. And if you want to um, learn what Dan feels and I felt was the uh, hooks, some of the hooks, hopefully it will help you to begin the process of getting out. And then also I've got a little part from my book in there about some tools that will help you to get free. So I think it's a really good little book, so you might really enjoy it. So we just want to tell you about it, okay, because we want to help you. Uh, we're not all about the money. Trust no. me, we're not about the money. No. Don't even think about it. But if nobody you know, could afford a book, we'd send you a PDF. We, we really of would. Book, really, if, if you, if you want really, one, really do. You know, we'll just yeah, send absolutely. you a PDF. You can have it for nothing. But my book's two ninety nine dollars um, on Amazon by ebook. Um, we try to make them as cheap as we can. They, they have limits on Almost us on just Amazon. just to cover the cost of the printing. That's yeah, it. that's right, because it costs a lot for them to mail that out, so it goes out automatically from Amazon. So anyway, well, we love you guys, and yep. we truly do, and that's we why do. we're doing this. Uh, again, yep. not for the money, but just because we really want to help, because we feel like we got helped, and we're glad to pass it on, honestly. And we're just sharing how we got out and yep. what we went through, and that's all we can do is share on our experience, and then it's experiential. And then you can take it or leave it or do yeah. whatever you want with it. Yeah. But if you feel it's helpful, pass on the video, yeah. like and subscribe. And uh, so it gets out to more people. And uh, feel free to do it uh, with it, with a video, what you will. Once it's Amen. on YouTube, it's free to do whatever you want with. So you can post it or repost it or whatever you want. Yep, yep. All right. All right. That's it. We love you. God bless you guys. Thank yes. you. All right. God bless bye -bye. you. Bye-bye.